Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Recently got an espresso machine and that means, hey, we got woodworking projects to do. Let's make some extras. So thanks to the people on the hive mind and those who watch the live videos, I have recently gotten into espresso making. So thank you for that. Uh, but that means I now need all of the accessories and some of them I can make. So we're gonna use a small scrap I have of walnut and we're gonna make some fun. Okay, I know some of you are gonna say, so small small scrap, scrap, that's not a small, yes, this actually is a, a small yeah. cut off from a, a shop. To be and uh, yeah, I've been pulling a bunch of different pieces out of this over the years, like and over every time I need something thick and heavy, inches. this is usually what I grab. Uh, and in this case, it's about uh, three and a half inches thick. And, uh, well, however big it is. With that live edge on there, I decided to try and, and keep that. So I'm trying to figure out how big of a piece can I get out of this. Where is it best to pull this out? And I want something fairly square because I need to put in um, several holes to fit all of the individual pieces. And I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to fit them in and where they're all going to be placed. Uh, but as we go along, it's one of these things where we can kind of experiment and play with and, and find out what we want. So first off, we need to actually cut this all down to shape and size. So we grip it with the big handsaw and here I'm actually using a, a cheap crosscut saw because I'm doing some experimenting with a couple different saws to uh, to see um, do any of them work uh, well enough to use as regular in the shop and I kind of like using a cheap crosscut saw for big rips where I don't care about the finish quality I just want to take off a lot of material and they, they do really good for big heavy fast rips now for the live edge here, I don't want bark uh, because we're going to be around coffee and food and that's just a place for little things to fit into. So I'm going to trim this all off and the spoke shape is really the tool for cleaning off uh, bark on here. It just it, it comes off beautifully. Also I have this knot on the end and I want it to be a little bit more flush than that so we're going to be cleaning that up but uh, I want to kind of keep that live edge feel to it. So leaving a little bit of the, the sap growth uh, on the face and uh, then cutting this off flush so that the front edge um, doesn't stick out any farther than the farthest point of the live edge. Now that we have the, the front face um, addressed, we need to actually start squaring this thing up. And to square it up, you need to do one edge, one face, completely flat and true. And so I'm going to plane this down and then use it to mark off the other sides. Once I have one side flat and true, then I can draw lines on the other side and then plane to it. For the end grain, um, you want to plane to the middle and I don't go all the way out the other side. I stop just shy and then I'll come around from the other side and come back into it. And if you just plane to the middle, then you can make sure that you're not going to be blowing out the other side. And then I want to figure out um, where am I going to put all these things. And I was trying a bunch of different setups for you know, which one will fit here, which one will fit here. Um, and I finally figured out what I wanted on this. And I ended up changing things even after that. So the next thing we need to do is lay out this. In the back there are three items and I want them all to be centered a certain distance from the back because the back of this is actually my reference edge. And then I can mark in from either side to space them out. So I put one mark in the middle and then I split that off and figure out what looks good and then balance those off so that they're all evenly spaced across the back. Then for the front, there are yeah. two holes that need to be drilled, one of them for the portafilter and then one of them for okay. the Three leveler. And so those uh, just need to be the same distance Big from the back, but then I want to make them equal distance from either side. And everything at this point just kind of eyeballed, so I'm kind of spacing everything out and figuring out what's up with it. Now this, this is a uh, self-driving bit from Wood Owl. And big holes like this, usually I would go with a hole saw. Uh, but then I saw this on Tay Tools and thought, yeah, I think I can do that. The problem is this needs a lot of leverage. You need a big, beefy, honking thing on there. And uh, with my normal brace, uh, it just wasn't enough to dig Still into no that. Work. So then I decided, well, let's try it with the drill. And with the drill, um, that <laughs> drills actually don't have that much leverage. And I can get more leverage with my brace. And I can get in a little ways and then stop and back up and then stop and back up. And it just wasn't very good for the drill to do this. Um, and then I also tried a T-handle, but the chuck fitting on there wasn't working nope. out very well. Um, I'll leave a link to these bits nope. down below. 
uh, because they are a lot of fun for these larger things. But you do need a big brace. And in this case, this one works out well. It's got a very large swing on there, and I can work this in. Now, it isn't quite enough. I can run it smoothly. Um, if it were a little larger, maybe, or if there were two handles running one on either side. But with this one, I can crank it in, and uh, it, it works. I was actually rather impressed with that. Um, in the past, for big holes like this, I've done a hole saw. Um, but in this case, that would have been a lot more of a pain because they're not going all the way through. I'd have to bottom it out. And then there are two others that are slightly smaller. I think these are two and a half, and the larger one was like uh, two and seven eighths or big sizes. <laughs> and then uh, for the, the pins, I'm actually gonna be putting in a small hole that was only like a five eighths, which that felt really easy to drill all of a sudden. Then for the, uh, the, the mesh on here, I'm gonna actually route in a slot for that to fit into. Now, I'm basically making a dado, a tiny, tiny little dado, about an eighth inch wide, and I'm going to be using my mortising gauge to mark out either side, and then I can come in with my eighth inch chisel and start carving down to it. And so I'm going to carve in a little ways and then mark it out with a knife on the other side to um, break all the fibers and then carve in a little ways. And then I found out it's actually easier to mark these sides with a chisel, and so I'm going to be coming down the sides of the dado with a chisel, and then I can come in with the eighth inch chisel and carve it out. And I'm just going to slowly go until I'm down to depth with a slight round on the bottom so that it fits in and holds itself nicely. I could have done a slightly thinner slot if I had a thinner chisel, but my thinnest regular chisel is uh, an eighth inch, so it'll work fine. For the bottoms of all these, I'm going to use the router to level them out. Uh, they will still have a hole in the middle from the lead screw. That's okay. Um, there's going to be uh, um, coffee pieces covering them, so that's fine. Um, but for the router, it just makes it sit a little bit flatter. This one, I wanted it to go down a little bit farther, so we need to route it down until it's resting on the rim. And uh, the, the sidewalls of these aren't incredibly beautiful because they are left off from the, the tool. I could have come in with a, uh, uh, with a gouge and made them a little bit cleaner, but I decided to just leave them rough. Uh, they're going to be covered anyways. So that's where everything else fits in there, except for we need the portafilter hole to go into it. And I need to level this out, but the router wouldn't reach down that far. So it's just using the chisel bevel down. And uh, I, on all of these, I'm going to go around with the chisel bevel down and chamfer the edges just to make them nice and, and clean. Uh, for the front edge of this, I need a, a slot chopped out for the handle to fit into. And my original idea is I'm going to chop down to depth. And then I started looking at the handle and realizing it's got to go down there a good ways. And the bottom of it needs to be rounded to match the handle. So I'm figuring out how deep it needs to go down in. And then I can mark how far it needs to go down in. And I'm just going to find a bit that is the same radius or close to of the, uh, the metal collet on the portafilter. And then that would allow me to drill the bottom of it. And this ends up being a little bit lower than the bottom of the actual... Um, uh, the, the hole that we dug out um, because the handle is a little lower than the bottom of the port filter. So I'm just going to drill in as far as I need to. It's only about a half inch or so. Um, and then I can chop out with the material back to um, that hole in there. And so I can chop the sides down and then play, basically play connect the dots. I also need to do a little bit of carving at the bottom to match up with the round so you can get the flat then carving into that rounded area, and that then fits that particular portafilter perfectly. After that, we can come in and start doing all the detail. We're going to put a chamfer on all of this, and I like doing a chamfer on that live edge. I, I could come in with a spoke shave and do that, um, but I like just freehand carving it, and that's a, a really easy skill to learn and incredibly joy enjoyable to, uh, to do those freehanded shapes with a, a, a chisel. For all of the other straight corners, just coming in with a block plane is uh, beautiful, works out really well. And then for this tiny little piece here, always make sure you're going with the grain, back and forth and back and forth until you get it in. Yes, I am going to sand this after I've smoothed it all. Um, I'm just going to be hitting it with some 400 grit sandpaper, and this will actually uh, fill the pores with dust. Uh, that will allow the oil to soak in a little bit farther and you get a little more of the richness to come out. And especially in this walnut, I want that deep, rich color um, then to be separated from the front white um, of the sapwood. And I, I kind of like that contrast. Walnut is, is a beautiful wood in that it has its own contrast in there between the sapwood and the dark chocolate outside, inside. And, oh, mm, yeah, I love this part, especially with the walnut. It just it just soaks it up. And th this wood is so dry, you can just see it running right into the end grain there. Um, I ended up putting, what, six, seven coats of uh, boiled linseed oil, not coats, just soaking it again and again until it stopped taking up more. Um, I'm going to let it soak in about 15 minutes or so, and then 
wipe off the excess, and paste wax. And now we can take it for a test run and see how it goes. We're going to measure out 20 grams of beans, put them into the top to be ground, and those then go into the portafilter. Here we can take it over to the buddy, and we can use the whisk to take out all the clumps, level it out, pound it down in, and all of those accoutrements are now in the buddy. And that allows us to then put it into the head and pull our shot. And uh, yeah, it's not the best shot in the world, but it's not too far off. It's actually uh, really nice. There was a little bit of channeling in this one, but the taste was, uh, was right about where I wanted it to be. But we're going to turn it into a cappuccino. We're going to froth up some milk, put that in there, and I can show you my absolute amazing, okay, horrible cappuccino skills. Right okay, I need to work on that a bit more. That's but, right. Uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> cappuccino, buddy. And uh, I'm enjoying it. <laughs> Lots of fun. So there you have it, an espresso buddy. This is, I, I, I like this thing. Uh, it just kind of holds everything together, makes it neat, and there's just something about making espresso that you just have to have things precise and clean and accurate. It kind of goes into that whole same feel of hand tool woodworking is that it just kind of, it's nice when you have that, that tactile thing, but that also means you need more tools and then you need a place to store them and it's kind of the exact same thing as hand tools for some reason, but uh, yeah, espresso. Uh, I hope you'll like this because we're probably gonna be doing another video coming soon with a, an organizer to lift up the espresso machine. And if there's something like that you think I should do, let me know in the comments down below. I'd also love to hear uh, your thoughts on this. What could I have done better? Um, I actually had fun using those large bits, making big holes with hand tools is sometimes difficult and uh, I found those to work out really well. So I'll leave links to those down below. If there's something I'm missing or there's something I should know, let me know down in the comments down below. I do read through all of them. I learn a lot from that and really thank you for that. That does mean a lot. Anytime you put a comment down there, it, it helps out the channel. It helps us grow. It helps the channel get in front of more people and really that means a lot as well as hitting the like, share, subscribe, all those things you know about. On top of that, there are a bunch of names over here. Those are the people who decided to take it a step farther and really help out the channel in a direct manner. We are completely sponsored by you, the viewers, and all those people are patrons on Patreon. Without patrons or members from the channel, people who have clicked that join button, uh, we wouldn't exist. We are completely sponsored by you. So if you'd like to find out more about that, there's links in the description or click the little join button here, and we have special perks for both. I think they'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. People ask me why in the videos I shake so much. Well, <laughs> my answer.